Congratulations, you made it this far, you're an absolute warrior. But it's not quite done yet and CFA level 3 is a different animal. But don't worry, I've got you. In this video, I'm going to step through exactly how to crush the CFA level 3 exam. Let's go. So if you're new here, my name is Harris and I'm an investment banker and CFA charter holder and I passed all three levels first time scoring in the 90th percentile at all applicable levels. In today's video, I'm going to step through how to crush the level 3 exam including a level overview followed by some tips. Let's go. Okay, let's go through a level overview. Now, if you've seen my level one and two videos, you'd have heard me say level one is introductory in nature and level two has greater breadth and depth and becomes more applied. So at level three, you need to apply and become a portfolio manager. <laughs> now, I'm just kidding, but you really do need to think like one. And this is where essentially it all comes together. So there is no more cramming at this level. There's no more doing the practice questions and simply sitting the exam. You need to understand things from first principles and if you don't, you'll get found out. Also, level three is a lot more qualitative in nature. So it has far fewer formulas than level two. You'll be pleased to know and you can get through the material quite quickly, which feels good, but don't be deceived because the exam itself and the preparation for the exam is quite a lot tougher. I found this the hardest level. So in terms of topics, you now have seven as opposed to 10 at level one and two. So you no longer have quant, FRA or corporate finance and you're left with econ, alternative investments, derivatives, equity, ethics, fixed income and portfolio management. And within portfolio management, you have six sub modules. I'm not going to go through them, but I put the exam weights up on the screen. And as you can see, there is a significant leaning in this one towards portfolio management, so 35 to 40%, as well as 10 to 15% towards fixed income. So a combined 60%, which tells you everything you need to know about the focus here. It's going to be heavily portfolio management and fixed income focused, and we'll step through that in a second. In terms of the exam, it is a vignette style again, similar to level two. However, this time you have half multiple choice and half structured response. Now, structured response is the essay component, and it's not actually an essay, it's a free form box where you write your answer as opposed to there being answers presented to you as with the multiple choice. And I go through the technique in a second, but that's worth bearing in mind. So there are 11 vignettes for multiple choice and 11 for structured response, so a total of 22, and each of them has approximately four questions associated with it. That's not fixed, they actually use a point system here, so each vignette will have 12 points associated with it. That can be sort of three to five questions, but on an average of four, meaning in total 88 questions, again, like level two. Importantly, the structured response and the multiple choice parts of the paper are no longer split up. They used to be, now they're mixed, which is actually a bonus because it means you can, in theory, save some time on the multiple choice and reallocate that towards a structured response. Okay, the first tip is perfect your structured response technique. Now, I was going to put this later in the video because it makes sense chronologically. However, it's so important that I'm presenting it first. You need to nail your technique for the exam. Firstly, it is not an essay. It is a structured response question which should be answered using bullets, not long passages of text with flowery and grammatically correct language and so on and so forth. You want to use bullets with as few words as possible. Don't pay attention to grammar, don't replicate the formula, so on and so forth, keep it concise. It's important that you understand the different types of questions that you're going to get. So for example, explain, justify, calculate, identify, and so on. I'll link you to a video by Mark Meldrum where he explains these in detail. Definitely get your head around this because this dictates how you answer the question. The person who marks your question is going to be an expert in the field and they will know what you're trying to say, assuming it is in the ballpark. So just get your answer down on the paper. When you're doing the practice questions, you'll often see long answers in response to the questions. That is there to guide the marker. It is not a model answer. So you need to use as few words as possible in the interest of time and don't overcompensate by giving extra points. So for example, if they only ask for one or two things, don't give them three or four because they're only going to consider the first one or two and beyond that, it's just wasted time. So again, be concise. Also, practice is critical. You need to do it under time pressure and you need to do as many mocks as possible. And to be honest, on the CFAI portal, there's very few actual structured response questions. So. Again, a prep provider is key. Watch my first video. I went through who I used. That's really key for level three. Just a quick note to say, if you've seen my other CFA videos and you like my content, consider hitting like and subscribe. I really appreciate you. Let's keep going. 
Okay, tip two is start with the hardest topic. Now, it's the same as level two, and it's still very important. Now, I would start with fixed income because number one, it has the highest non-portfolio management weighting, and number two, it's very difficult. So it gets super technical. You go deep into yield curves, convexity, duration, and so on. And honestly, it's very hard to get the questions right if you don't take time to absorb it. So you're going to need to do at least two or three run-throughs for sure. And I would use review videos as frequently as possible to reinforce this. And then as you approach the exam, if you use a prep provider where you can do live sessions, this is probably where you're gonna have the most questions. So give yourself as much time as possible to digest this. And it's a similar thing with risk management, derivatives, alternative investments, and so on. As standalones, they might not be that difficult, but the structured response questions you get for these can be very hard. So again, do these relatively early in the process. And then once again, the likes of ethics need to be late on in your studies, probably last with ethics. Commit it to your short-term memory. I would suggest that you check out the Mark Meldrum video that I've linked below. He goes through the optimal order for level three. I use this, I stand by it as well. I think it's solid. Okay, tip number three is learning techniques. Now there's a few things here. And let's start with portfolio management. So as I said, it has a huge weighting at level three, particularly within portfolio management for individual investors and institutional investors. There are a bunch of model answers that if you get your head around will be easy marks in the exam, but if you don't, you'll lose marks on and it will be frustrating. So for example, you'll often see a passage of information and then they'll say, decipher the investment objective, goal, horizon, risk tolerance, so on and so forth, constraints, etc. And honestly, there's a common list that often recurs. And if you get your head around that, it's much easier to remember. And if not, you'll lose marks and it's really annoying. So remember that. Another one is behavioral finance. I found this one really frustrating because although conceptually it's quite simple, there's lots of overlaps and slight nuances between the different types of biases and so on. And it's quite hard to visualize them. So I would highly recommend for this, you do some sort of mind map type thing and map it out in somewhere where you can visualize the entire ecosystem and see the overlaps. Because otherwise, if you look at them individually, they're really hard to remember. And I found it frustrating. That sort of mind map approach helped me with that. Otherwise, a couple of points that I mentioned in my level two video that still apply here. So use the Feynman technique, which is essentially where you articulate your learning. So either explain it to someone, say it out loud, or put it on a piece of paper. And that helps you identify the gaps in your knowledge. It's a very effective way of learning. And otherwise, for the formulas, again, keep a separate set of notes isolated from all the detail where you work through them, try and derive them, etc. It helps visualize and cement and again, use the derivation approach wherever possible. It's always good to understand the origin of a formula because that makes it easier to remember in the actual exam. The final tip is time management is critical. I can't emphasize this enough. At level three, you are going to face time pressure in the exam that you did not encounter at level one and two. And that is because it is 50% written. So the structured response element adds a whole new dynamic that you won't be used to. So as I mentioned in tip one, exam technique here is critical. You don't want to treat it like an essay. It needs to be concise bullets to the point, no flowery language, and don't add excess points because you're not going to get marks from them. So just don't waste time. Use the flag function that I always emphasize. Again, it's really important. And another point is that you need to practice your mocks under time pressure. That's so important. A good prep provider here is key. I always emphasize this because actually there's not many mocks or any mocks on the CFAI portal. And so you need a prep provider who offers you these. So watch my first video. Okay, there you have it. Those are the four tips. So in summary, it is perfect your structured response technique. Start with the hardest topic learning techniques, and then time management is critical. If you like this, then you're going to love these two videos where I go through how I crushed the charter and whether it was worth it. Thank you and see you in the next video.